you know, in many ways, I think my what I do now um, comes from uh, dissatisfaction with how I was schooled. You know, I had quite painful experiences in school and found it very un unsatisfying, unpleasant, and didn't prepare me for life. So, you know, a lot of what we're doing is very different from the kind of scholastic model that many people have grown up with. So they come with the expectation they're going to have to learn a lot of information or write a lot of notes, and then they'll be even more clever. Yeah, but it's not really about that, and they quickly realize it's an experience, and there's a depth to that experience. Um, you know, just, well, three nights ago, we did, um, EFC is just one of the courses we do, right? But it's the biggest one. It's, it's the course I wish I'd have been able to do. I had to kind of take all this from different places, and then we put it together. It's the deepest one. But, you know, we do other, many other things. Like last night, I did two hours for a group, you know. But EFC is the big one. It's the deep one, so in some ways it represents what we do. Um, so a few nights ago, we did an EFC, e, um, EFC module in Moscow also in London um, in one evening we did a session with uh, swords a sword session which is very severe very intense people's shoulders hurt you know and we're triggering patterns we're showing people their patterns of I'm not good enough or I hate you or all these different patterns come out yeah so the point isn't to be macho around you know several hundred cuts with the sword uh, the, the point is to bring out the patterns relationships to authority whatever it is <coughs> a determination what do you care about so we're really bringing that out and we're taking the essence of the Japanese martial arts for that. Yeah, so maybe that would take years to get that knowledge in the Japanese martial arts, but we're really refining it into a, a super intense experience. And I, I'll give you an example. One guy, strong Russian guy, martial artist, he was really keen to do the session to sort of show everybody his expertise. And um, he dropped his sword at the beginning by mistake. I said, right, you're off the session. It's very, no, it's no, no bullshit this session. And he was horrified and he spent this 20 minutes of the session just angry, sitting there being angry and then working through his process and he had to let go of being the expert, which was a big thing for him, you know? And um, also then he had to work with his anger. So even not doing the session, he was, he, and he came up to me afterwards, and said, thank you. And he really got a strong experience from this, you know? Because it wasn't, I wasn't trying to be a jerk to him. It was the experience he needed and I could see that. Um, so, you know, somebody else was, you know, very small and weak and was having problems with confidence and I, I got them to really find that body of confidence. Now, in the same evening, one hour later, we did a play session. So in a play session, we're like little kittens rolling around on the floor, touching, hugging. I mean, this is all this some safety stuff around consent, of course, with all this. Yeah. Um, so this is like soft and eye contact and connecty. And, you know, this is like really hard for other people. And this is all about feeling and um, relationship and spontaneity. You know, the other session is all about doing exactly what you're told. Yeah? So this is in one evening. Um, and in the middle, we did some art to help people uh, process and think about it. Um, yeah, so there's people that are going to be challenged by the first one or the second one. Um, as a trainer, you need a huge versatility. So we're also demonstrating the versatility that for facilitators later. Um, so they have some experiences around this. And this is very strong experiences, but what really uh, changes people over a course is practice. So yeah, you have these big breakthrough experiences, but what's key is we give people a coach and then they get a practice. So for me, it was Aikido for, at first, yeah? And then later on, you know, these days it's more yoga. Um, meditations become a key practice, dance, body therapy. So people work with a coach to determine what they need to work on. They have about two months to work that out and they do some experiments and have some conversations with their peers and the coach and then they pick something and then for six months they, they pick that and maybe you know it's weights maybe it's like reading love poetry to your wife and comedy poetry to your children with the most passion and you know body you can maybe it's uh, there was an activist in brighton she took up kendo which is like I, 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 just to make them more fierce yeah other people they want to become more creative other people they want to get more grounded you know um, so this is again, it's very individual. It's not do what we do, or you should do this. That doesn't really work because um, you know, our joke is we're all fucked up in different ways. Yeah, we all need something different. And so we, we give a lot of freedom around what you choose uh, to help people build the capacity. And I think this is where embodiment's different from, again, from cognitive learning is practice. You're not just reading a book and then you've got it or maybe going on a weekend workshop with hey Tony Robbins and high-fiving and shouting and all that American bullshit because you feel good but then it just fades yeah so we're not trying to get people high um, you know if you want to do that take drugs it's easier and cheaper um, we're giving people a strong experience yes but only to motivate a practice 
and then they have a peer group which helps with that as well. So um, practice is the key. And actually we all know this, right? Like, how did you learn English? You practiced. How am I trying to learn Russian? I'm practicing. How did you learn tennis? How did I learn to drive? You practice. This is not a new idea. Um, for sports people, it's a very easy idea. You know, business people don't practice much. It's very interesting. You know, they perform 99%. Sports people are the opposite. They practice 99%. Um, so sports people are very easy to teach. Um, musicians are very easy to teach. They get it, you know. Other people need to be reminded that it's not enough to write down the note and then, right, I've got it. <laughs>